Today, we will be in England and Canada to revisit a fascinating and tragic story. So sit back as we go to the 1930s. George Percy Stoner was born in 1917 in southern England and grew up in the very popular seaside town of Bournemouth. He was a polite but rather shy boy who kept himself to himself. In September 1934, George saw an advertisement in the Bournemouth Daily Echo which asked for a young lad aged between 14 and 18 to do domestic and handyman work at a house named Villa Madeira which was on Five Manor Road, East Cliff, in Bournemouth. He applied for the position and because of his experience and the fact that he could drive, he was offered the job and George then proudly started his new employment at the house of 67-year-old retired architect Francis Morton Rattenbury and his 39-year-old wife of 10 years named Alma. Also living in the house was Alma's 13-year-old son by a previous marriage named Christopher, the couple's own six-year-old child named John, and the housekeeper named Irene Riggs. The owner of the house, Francis Mawson Rattenbury, was a retired architect who was originally from Yorkshire, but who in 1892 had travelled to work in Canada where he became very well known in his field. Within 10 months of his arrival, he had entered and won a competition to design the new British Columbia Parliament building in Victoria. The iconic design of the Parliament building meant that more work followed and he designed other notable buildings such as the Law Courts in Vancouver and the luxurious Empress Hotel on Victoria's waterfront. In 1898, while living in Canada, Francis married Florence Nunn and they had two children named Frank and Mary. The couple divorced in 1925. Alma herself grew up in Vancouver. She was an accomplished musician and when she was 19 she married a man called Caledon Dolling and together they went to live in England. Dolling enlisted in the British Army and in 1916 he was tragically killed in the Battle of the Somme. After the war Alma married Captain Compton Pakenham and they had a son named Christopher her marriage to the captain did not last and the couple eventually divorced, so Alma and her son returned to Vancouver to live with her mother. Alma returned to her musical career and on the 29th of December 1923, following her performance in Victoria, she went to the Empress Hotel where she met the architect Francis Rattenbury. Alma was beautiful, talented and had seen a lot for a woman still in her 20s having lost one husband in the war and divorced a second. She had also served as a transport driver and nurse in France during World War I, where she was twice wounded. The couple started having a relationship and Francis became besotted with Alma, who was half his age. He would take her out in Victoria and Vancouver and had no concern for either public opinion or his wife's feelings. He decided that he needed to be with Alma so asked his wife for a divorce, which she eventually granted, and in the spring of 1925, he and Alma were married. Soon after they had a son, they seemed very happy together, but in 1929 Florence died, and Francis was left a social outcast. The treatment of his ex-wife and his relationship with Alma had left him isolated from his friends and colleagues. Work started to dry up, so the couple returned to England and settled in the beautiful coastal town of Bournemouth. It was now the end of the 1920s. As time passed in England, Francis became increasingly discontent. He started drinking and was worried about some of his business ventures which had not been successful. Alma was still young and enjoying some success as a composer of popular songs. She was attractive and hoped to have a career as a songwriter, but she was now in a poor domestic situation. Her husband slept on his own downstairs. He drank heavily and Alma felt neglected, but it was still a surprise that two months after taking his new position, the young 18-year-old George started having an affair with Alma. She had gone from being with a man twice her age 
to being with a man half her age. Alma believed herself to be in love with George and George completely fell in love with Alma. He had suddenly gone from being an innocent youth to the lover of a beautiful older woman who had already had three husbands. The relationship continued for a few months with George visiting Alma's bedroom most nights. The house they all shared was not very big so it'd be assumed that Francis knew what was going on between his wife and his chauffeur. As time went on, George started to get very possessive towards Alma and became jealous whenever she spent time with her husband. On Friday, March the 22nd, 1935, George had driven Alma to London so she could do some shopping, returning two days later on Sunday the 24th. They returned to find Francis very depressed. Alma comforted her husband, but George misinterpreted her concerns for affection and became very upset. After reassuring young George that everything between them was fine, Alma went to bed, but around midnight she heard a noise coming from downstairs. She got up and went to investigate, and she found her husband unconscious in a chair with blood on his head. She immediately called for a doctor and when he arrived she told him that Francis had fallen and hit his head on the piano. Realising that the injuries were more severe than Alma had described on the phone, the doctor sent for an ambulance and Francis was taken to hospital. When the medical staff examined him, they realised that his injuries were consistent with being hit with a blunt instrument, so called the police. The police went to the house, only to find that Alma had been drinking and wasn't making much sense. She told them that her husband had been depressed, so tried to harm himself by hitting himself on the head with a mallet. She then changed her story and said that she had attacked him. She kept on shouting she had done him in. The police went away as they were not sure that Alma was in the right state to give a statement. But they returned the next day and Alma again confessed to the attack, so they arrested her for attempted murder. Two days later, with Alma in custody, George told the housekeeper that he was the one who had attacked Francis. The housekeeper contacted the police and they arrested George. On the Thursday of the same week, which was the 28th of March 1935, Francis Mawson Rattenbury died and both George and Alma were charged with murder. The trial of Alma Rattenbury and George Stoner commenced on May the 27th, 1935, at the Old Bailey in London. As the sensational case brought so much press and public interest, it was decided that the case was too big for a local court. Both the defendants entered a plea of not guilty. George refused to say anything at the trial, other than answer his name. His counsel did not deny that he may have hit Francis, but they pleaded temporary insanity. Alma, however, put up a robust defence. The prosecution painted her as the villain. They told of her scandalous behaviour that had led her to be shunned by Canadian society when she entrapped the successful but married architect and conducted a very indiscreet affair with him before he divorced his less attractive wife to wed her. And then when she returned to England, she took advantage of the young hired help. Alma acquitted herself well on the stand and batted back many of the accusations made against her. The trial lasted for four days and on May the 31st, the jury retired to consider the case. They only deliberated for 47 minutes before reaching a verdict. They found Alma innocent of all charges and they found George guilty of murder. The jury recommended mercy due to George's young age. The judge moved George to the centre of the courtroom to pass sentence, and the court was shocked when the judge sentenced young George Stoner to death. The execution was scheduled for June the 18th. As Alma left the courtroom, she was booed by the large crowd that had gathered outside. Throughout the trial, public sympathy had been with George. A clemency petition was started to stop George's execution. Alma was very distressed following the trial. The press had been against her and she seemed to be disliked by all the public. Her husband had died and her lover would be hanged and she thought it was all her fault. She left London on the train and returned to Dorset. 
she went to the Three Arches Railway Bridge, which was a beautiful location in the English countryside. And there, on a sunny day, surrounded by fields and wild flowers, she repeatedly plunged a knife into her heart. In her bag, a last letter was found with the words, it is beautiful here, what a lovely world we are in. It must be easier to be hanged than to have to do the job oneself. Thank God for peace at last. When George was told of her death, he broke down. Alma was buried in Bournemouth, just a few metres away from Francis. Her death provoked more interest in George's clemency petition, and it soon had over 320,000 signatures, including the local Member of Parliament. On receiving the petition, the Home Secretary commuted George's sentence to life in prison. George only served seven years of his sentence and was released in 1942, when he went into the army to serve during the Second World War. After the war, he returned to Bournemouth. He died in the year 2000, aged 83. George never publicly confessed to the murder of Francis Rattenbury. Thank you so much for listening to this very sad and tragic case. As usual, please leave any comments you may have, and I will see you in the next brief case.